has become one of the important uh, things of late uh, for taking appropriate uh, actions and mitigating the risk and ensuring the profitability of a financial institution. So from that uh, standpoint, we need to understand right from the basics, <clears throat> what are the various uh, credit analysis models that are there and uh, based on uh, uh, based on simple formulas or uh, some basic uh, structures and the various uh, ratings kind of models that are available so we will uh, look at uh, all these uh, aspects so to start with whenever i talk about the word credit risk the major thing that i am trying to derive there is any borrower resulting in either a default or delay <coughs> both of them come under the credit risk any kind of a default or a delay in making a timely payment of interest and principal whatever <coughs> they have borrowed and whatever is the initially agreed upon uh, the schedule for the interest and the payment any kind of delay or default as far as that particular payments are uh, concerned the timely payment of interest as well as principal if at all i am feeling it as a risk <coughs> saying that there may be a delay or there may be a default it means i am exposed to risk so when i am exposed to risk it's not that uh, there is a hundred percent chance of a risk so that is where we assign a probability of default okay what is the chance that this person will default on this loan or that this company will default on the loan again default could be uh, it could result even in a delay and both of interest as well as principal so what is the chance that this particular uh, party fails to pay either the interest or principal when it is falling due that is what we call as the probability of default and once that party defaults at any point in time so uh, because i am a, a lender i may be at loss but what we are saying is that loss may not be the entire 100% of the money because at the time of uh, <coughs> the bond agreement or in the indenture for the bond there must have been some kind of a collateral in case the default has occurred or there could be some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, collaterals mentioned as a part of the initial agreement that in case uh, i default or in case there is a, a delay in the payment the lender can have a possession of xyz assets so all these things could give me some money back or in some cases the entire money back also even if the default has occurred <coughs> that particular aspect is measured through what we are calling as loss given default what is the amount of loss in case the lender the borrower has defaulted how much i can recover so these two words loss given default and recovery rate there's a lot of relationship between these two words the loss given de default is very much associated with the recovery rate both of them are inversely proportional because if the recovery rate is around 90 percent when i say recovery rate how much i can recover from the other party in case the party has defaulted <coughs> so 10 percent forms the loss given default if 90 percent is the recovery rate 10% becomes the loss given default. So that's what is the relationship between these two definition. So either we may uh, state the loss given default or the recovery rate and try to derive the other. And in the credit risk world, we very well use another important definition called expected loss. Generally, when I say expected loss, 
it is probability of default into loss given default if uh, so this is also in a percentage form this is also in a percentage form so the expected loss actually comes in the percentage form loss given default is how much proportion of money i can lose of the total uh, money i can lose in case there is a default probability is what is the chance of default so when i am multiplying these two i get <coughs> expected loss and what is what it is said is if i multiply it with my total exposure how much of money i have lent then it is an expected loss in the monetary terms in the dollar term but if i am taking only these two quantities then it is the expected loss in the percentage terms so i can either i can express it in terms of uh, percentage of the total exposure or the dollar value of the total exposure but that is what we call as expected loss and what people uh, what people uh, understand is this expected loss will be different for different states of economy because if the economy is in a boom phase what we typically see the chances of default are much lesser and even because the assets value will go up whatever have been uh, set as a collateral even their values are going up so the loss given default also will come down because the recovery rate could be much much higher so what you see is expected loss will be much lesser during uh, an economy uh, when when the economy is in a booming period compared to <coughs> a recessionary kind of a period so the expected loss is expected to change with the state of the economy and what we typically observe is compared to the expected loss the present value of the expected loss is what is typically more and more important as a part of the credit risk analysis process the present value whenever we are saying the present value obviously there are two things one <coughs> one discounting of all the future cash flows or here in in this case because we are talking about losses discounting the uh, discounting all the future expected losses to the present value so pv of the expected losses you expect okay at the end of uh, one year what is the expected loss at the end of two years what is the expected loss at the end of five years what is the expected loss you get all of them to the present value and you say that that is equal to the present value of the expected loss now here <coughs> the discounting i am doing it using a risk neutral probability not using the probability of a default because all the future losses they are adjusted by a risk neutral probability so probably there is a 30% chance of a loss and 70% chance of a new loss so based on this i am trying to uh, come out with uh, a risk neutral uh, kind of a probability and based on that i am discounting all the expected losses so we are not using uh, the default uh, probability based on uh, risk premium just like the way we uh, we go with uh, options okay if there is a loss i am going to get 0 and if there is no loss i am going to get 30 let's say so when i am using the risk neutral probability approach the expected loss is only 21 <coughs> see when i take probability of default we are saying okay 30% chance is the probability of default and the loss given default is 100% so the expected loss i am taking it uh, as 30% into 100% which is around 30% and doing the work but what we are saying is when i go with a risk neutral probability 
okay there is a 30% chance of losing a 100% whereas a 70% chance of losing something else. so we are coming up with a cash flows which is a risk neutral probability based kind of uh, cash flows and uh, arriving at the present value of them so uh, that is an indication